Anyone who, who has kids knows that when you, when, you, when you see the pediatrician, they always measure three things, height, weight, and head circumference. One of the reasons we follow the head circumference closely is it's, it's almost like a vital sign for the brain. If there's something abnormal going on within the brain that can cause uh, increased pressure, the end result will be that the head circumference will, will go up. And so pediatricians follow this closely. Uh, so we actually have charts that can chart the normal head circumference as a child develops. And most kids fit with between the third and the 97th percentile. When I met her, she was nine months old, and the normal head circumference at that age is about 42 centimeters. Her head circumference was 76 centimeters. And the normal ad adult head circumference is 50, 54, 50, 55 centimeters. But that goes off the charts and even off the page. Hydrocephalus is when there's an abnormal accumulation of fluid inside the brain. Our brain bathes in fluid. It, it looks like water, and there's fluid in the center of the brain, in cavities called ventricles, and all around it, and it kind of floats in this fluid. And hydrocephalus, well, the name explains it. It's hydrocephalus, water on the brain. And there's many different causes, but what happens is that the normal piping where the fluid circulates can become blocked. And when it's blocked, the fluid is produced, but it has nowhere to escape from, so it accumulates. And when it accumulates, it increases the size of the fluid cavities inside the brain, and that's, that's hydrocephalus. Her, her head was so big and, and so heavy, it was almost like it was anchoring her down. Every aspect of daily life that we all take for granted was a chore for her and for her family. There was over three liters of fluid within her brain. And so without any intervention, we couldn't see how she would have any hope for a, a functional and a, and a good life. The goal of the surgery was to reduce the size of her skull. It's essentially called a reduction cranioplasty. And so there are many steps in that. The first step was done before surgery where we planned out the cuts we wanted to make in her skull, how we wanted to re rearrange them, and then the end result of how we wanted her skull to look. So the first thing that Dr. Borsak uh, and I did was plan that, that part of the surgery. And that was done with, with, a, with a company that, that has a, a computer software that allows us to recreate in a 3D space her current skull and then the skull that we end up wanting to, to create. And, and with those models and a 3D printer, we're able to print out these skulls and, and, and really plan out the surgery. The surgery itself, um, the first step was to do an incision from ear to ear and expose her skull. And so this is a, this is a replica of before surgery. And so you can see, um, once we had exposed it, we placed on her skull, and I'll place it here, we placed the, the models that were created before surgery to plan out the areas that we would cut out the, the pieces in her skull. And we basically traced these areas of bone. After that, we went and, and cut the, the pieces, removing different areas of the skull like a puzzle, and put them to the side. And that essentially exposed her, her entire brain enveloped in the dura mater. Because between the brain and the skull, there's a layer that's almost like, like leather called the dura mater. And so her entire uh, brain and, and surrounded by dura mater was exposed. And on a side table, Dr. Borsak rearranged uh, all these pieces of her skull, almost like a puzzle, uh, to give the final version, which was like this. He replaced these, these uh, pieces of bone together and back onto the base of her skull. In between these two steps, it was important to drain this massive amount of fluid that she had. And so we put a temporary drain and we drained it slowly to certainly less than a liter. And the second thing that we did was that the layer that's around the brain, this dura matter, we had to reduce its size. And so we, by, by different techniques, we reduced the envelope that's around the brain. Reducing the fluid in the center of the brain, reducing the envelope around the brain, and of course, taking off the pieces of bone that, are, that form her skull, rearranging them and putting them back in place to give her a new, a new skull of, re of reduced size. And already since surgery, it's been just under a month, uh, if, if you look on her brain MRI, her, her brain is actually grown. It's, it's, it's about twice as thick as it was, which is a good indicator of, of her potential thus to, to improve. And already her, 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 I can see it and her family can see it. She's more active, more vibrant, 
more engaged, uh, her social, socially she's more interactive. She's a beautiful little girl, you know. She, uh, she's done great. She, uh, you know, this family has been through a lot. You know, they came from a country where they had limited resources and, and they, they've came here to, to Canada, to, to, to Montreal for, for a better life, for their family and, and for their daughter. And they've gone through a lot in the time that they've been here, in the year and a half that they've been here. They've been through a lot. They've been through uh, now three surgeries and they've done it with resilience uh, and courage. And so when I see her, you know, coming sort of on the other side of that, and we were just with her and, and she was playing with us and smiling and uh, starting to do the things that we expect all kids to be able to do.